Hi everybody and welcome to SA Rugby Magazine and Betway. Uh, trying to figure out some sense in this rugby tour, who's going to win, why they're playing um, and, and what's going to happen. Uh, I've got Scott Gibbs with me. Scott, welcome back to South Africa. Mark, welcome as Thanks, always. Yes. Scott, what are you doing here? Well, I'm here for the obvious choice. You know, I want to support the, support the team, support the series. Um, obviously a lot of consternation in the, the sport in sphere at the moment about what's going on uh, around the globe with, with the pandemic. So I thought it incumbent on me to come back home. You know, yeah, you got a real stop. spiritual connection with Cape Town uh, and certainly the Lions. Um, so I made a special effort to, to get you. Yeah, well, you've been talking about coming for, for down for the tour. I, th I suppose you fancy that you probably have a, a pint of Guinness or something like that, but that's not the one done. Huh? Yeah, well, you know, I made it clear to you, Kev, that uh, while the discussions were happening, is the tour going to go ahead originally uh, and was it then going to be redirected to the UK? And if that was the case, my intention was always to, to make a special trip back to Cape Town, um, see family and friends and, and, and hopefully enjoy the, the beautiful hospitality of South Africa. Obviously that, that, is, that has changed and uh, is likely to change further. Notwithstanding that, still a test series to look forward to and uh, I guess we're all salivating for that opening game against the Emirates Lions to see, you know, what shape the British and Irish Lions are in and and their chances going forward. Because I know this man has upset a lot of people in in, in the British Isles about his prediction. So I'm here to defend our honour uh, going forward. <laughs> well, speaking of predictions, Mark, you did make the prediction that it would be a three-nil easy. Yeah. Easy win for the for the lines. Do you, for, for, for the box. Do you still sit by that? Yeah, comfortable. I said three nil. I uh, I also questioned the selection of Alan Wynne Jones as the captain and said they may as well send him through customs in a wheelchair and he hasn't made it here. So I'm already kind of one step ahead there on that one. I still stand by. I've considered all the factors, no crowds, potentially three test matches in Cape Town, and I still think the box will be too settled. Uh, and Rusty being there, very important. Uh, had Jock Nienhaber been there on his own, I, I wouldn't quite have been as confident, but I still think the box will, will win the series 3-0. Yeah, At sea level. <laughs> and Scott, I mean, I don't know what science Mark is using, but I mean, maybe you can shed some light on, on, on will the lines get uh, pasted the, the way that Mark is saying. Well, I, I think we have to apply an element of logic is that the, the box haven't played, um, they haven't played a competitive test match since, uh, since the World Cup final. No. Uh, the, old, the old adage says, you're only as good as your last good game, which was that. Um, are they a settler squad? Who, who in the last 20 or so months has improved personally and has developed personally within that squad? Um, and whose rugby has fallen off the cliff? I, I don't know. I mean, we haven't seen, certainly in the British, uh, in the British Isles, uh, you know, the domestic um, performances of the teams and the individuals, because I know you've gone through iteration after iteration of, of Curry Cup, so it's probably a little bit of boredom, and you maybe get sucked into this mystique that, that players are on form. So we don't know. There's, there's a lot up in the air about how settled this Springbok squad is um, from a playing perspective. We have to just wait and see. Uh, but I think from a logic perspective, you know, you have a team of, intellect, uh, of internationals. So the Lions is a collective, a collective of, uh, you know, experience, a collective of expertise, not only in coaching from a player point of view, technical, physiologically, all, all of that. So that, this bubble is kind of, you know, a, is, is something that's no different to any other touring party. They come to... You know, they come to a shore, they prepare and train together, travel on a bus, stay in a hotel. You know, they go through the same kind of anxiety as any touring site. So th this, this COVID issue is, is clearly something that's, um, that they have to deal with. But I think that will galvanize them. Um, and, and that's the whole benefit of, of these Lions tours is, is getting people together. Um, and how they harmonize. Mm. But there's, there's something taken out of that tour, um, the, the, that, that, that dynamic in the tour, in terms of, you know, uh, let's be honest, having a pint with your mates is, is a big part of it. 
you know, there's 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 talk that the only the match day 23 are allowed to go to the stadium. I mean, that 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 surely disrupts a, a tour. Like you, you've been on tour before here and a successful tour. I mean, how how does that play into it? It does affect the dynamic. Uh, it, it kind of does it create greater resolve because of the conditions that you have to prepare under now. Um, you know, I, I think if you're looking from a, a, a game day experience, the the intimidation of walking down the tunnel onto the pitch in one of the big stadia here is an enormous uh, thrill, because it creates, you know, it creates this kaleidoscope of of emotions that you go through that you that you necessarily go through in part of preparing against uh, you know one of the world's best. So that's taken away. Um, the fact is that some of the uh, comforts of, of, of touring have been taken away because you haven't got the freedom and latitude to, 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 to go for a coffee, to have a nice meal and, and to have a beer and you know, win, lose or draw, celebrate in that regard. So you know, there's a lot of things that are going to go against them, but li clearly they understand that footprint. Mm -hmm. That is the mentality that both sides have to ad adopt. Um, and who do, you, who do you think it'll favor in terms of the, 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 the empty stadiums? <sighs> who knows? I really, who knows? Yeah. I mean, it, it's the same for both sides. I was hoping you'd know about it. Well, no, no, listen, you know, you, 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 can, you can pretty much... You, you, let's look at the first game, you know, the, the Amherst Lion. It's, it's going to be it's going to be the first game out of the traps. Um, we don't know what the selection looks like at the moment, but I'm, I'm guessing a lot of the England representatives will have some game time this weekend. It's, it's a game at altitude, which, uh, you know, is, is another hindrance. Um, what's that from like? the, I mean, what, what's it like playing at altitude? You've done it several times. Yeah, and, and I think for a, for a big portion of, of this, um, this squad, would ha wouldn't have had the exposure. So playing, playing in Johannesburg at... You know, at uh, yeah, yeah, it's it, it's tough. So the physiological challenges are, and there's, there's no real rhyme or reason um, for fitness, age, health. It, it it affects everybody differently, but certainly it's uh, it, it can equate to kind of 12 to 16 percent of, of of physical dim diminished performance. So you know, it's 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 a big big ask. Um, you know, what happens? There's there's you know what happens at altitude is that you know you get fatigued very quickly if you if you and look sorry scott if you look at uh, the schedule and you've got lions on a saturday sharks on a on a wednesday and you've got the bulls on a saturday but none of the 46 springboks are allowed to play in those games so you've got very very weakened very youthful provincial lineups that are going out and one of the things that gatlin said that made the 2017 tour of new zealand uh so enjoyable was that the Lions could get stronger throughout the tour because they were playing such quality teams every week. By the time they got to that first test and beyond, they were playing the New Zealand regional sides that had a lot of the All Blacks in it. Could you have a situation of the Lions, by rights, they should be 20, 30, 40 point winners in every one of these games, being deluded by the time they come to that first test or not really quite knowing what to expect because they've really played no one? Well, I guess because the, these tours now are condensed, the more shorter, the, fo the focus is always only on about the three tests. Um, we have, like, for, for all of the squad members in the, in the Lions cap now, um, because it's five, six weeks of, of con condensed football, there's probably only 120 minutes opportunity for you, for you to put your hand up for selection. So um, Gatlin will be pretty sure as to what he perceives as 23, as strong as 23 is going into that first test in Cape Town. But it does give opportunity to, to, to everyone that will have exposure over the next three games because clearly they're going to be competitive. You've got settled regional sides, but we are talking about a, a collective of internationals here. So um, I don't think it's going to be easy and certainly won't be easy on Saturday for those who are kind of ring rusty and have been exposed to uh, you know, the English Championship and going into an international arena with the added, uh, added stresses of the physiological challenges of playing at altitude, which will only fatigue them as they, as they, as they go longer into the game, whereas I think Gatlin's uh, appreciation and also physiology behind the, um, 
the Jersey training camp and you know tra training in the hypoxic chambers is to get these guys physically in shape so when they hit the first test they're starting to get stronger and will enable them to finish stronger in this test series. Well there, there may be the possibility of, of, of all tests being played in Cape Town. Yeah and the box box historically their, their record in Cape Town isn't isn't that uh, uh, delirious is it? Yeah and they've never played at the Cape Town Stadium. Wow. Uh, as a national team, and uh, some of those players have actually never played there. They only really started playing the provincial rugby in the last year. But if you look at, at, at a tour, you've been on three Lions tours. For those who need to be reminded, 1997, you were the player of the series, uh, famous for knocking over us, famous for doing a lot of things. Uh, one, how much do the Lions on tour, because that 97 tour was really one of the first ones that we saw the 40,000 in the in the stands, the 30,000 Lions at, at every ground. You couldn't tell who, who was home team. Yeah, yeah. And, and they said the same in New Zealand in 2017 and, and Australia 2013. It, if you speak to the New Zealand, South African and, and Aussie players, they said they felt like they were playing away from home. How much did they, do you feed off that as a player, firstly, and how do they make up for that in these, in these build-up matches? You definitely feed off it. I mean, I, I can I can resonate in that with, with you know just looking back first test uh, at, at Newlands. You know the crowd kept us in the game. There's certainly times during the game where you need that kind of visceral response from your crowd. Um, but we've got s these players and we as supporters have got used to this kind of hollow feeling in stadia now, and it's crying shame that we've got this beautiful stadia here in in South Africa that uh, we haven't got. Uh, we haven't got no one watching, so... Uh, and the, the Euros have, have proven the, the, um, how, just how important the crowd is to a sporting event. Well, if you look in the last 48 hours, you know, of the, the, the soccer England-Germany or, yeah. you know... So even look at France, the, uh, even, even look, Wimbledon even, tennis. Even look at Wimbledon, exactly. Yeah. The, the connection that players feel with the stadia and the, and the support it is it is critical. I mean, it's just, you know homogenous. It's just that's what sport is about. The theatre of sport is about the stadium. It's the personality that it creates, and the performance that comes out of it. So it is going to be different. It's going to be totally different. And does that level the playing field? Probably, probably does to some degree. Because equally, one of the big demands of coming to this country is the Springboks playing in front of a very vocal home support. That's not going to be there. And those players collectively as a, as a Bok unit have never experienced that because they haven't played. So it will be interesting to see how they go against Georgia on, uh, on Friday night. And I also think that's a very good draw for them. It's like a real old copper stump session. It's going to be a bruising battle up front. You know Georgia don't have the backs to trouble them, so it's not a game they're going to ever well, be they in. scored eight tries against Holland. They did indeed, eh? Uh, they got, they got, re reused, they got, they, they got kind of prepped prep for playing against the Afrikaans Maybe blokes up north. A, a, a well, the, the box have to prepare. They have to have a shootout against mm. somebody, there's no doubt. But it, but, but, but it causes anxiety, certainly, because, you know, th 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 there will be injuries picked up and, and, and so on and so forth. But I, I think, in best part, the... You know, the South African squad, if you look four months before the World Cup, it was settled. It was the first to arrive in Japan, so it was better prepared. Mm. So, again, no stone and turn from Rassi's perspective and Jack's perspective is that the collective, the, the expertise is there, just needs to have a run out, needs to have a clean bill of health. And then the focus will be on how much damage the provincial teams can cause against the, the British and Irish Lions. Will that, will that be coordinated with, with Rassi in terms of the way that he would like teams to play against the Lions? Um, but, uh, not so much, Kev, I think because of the, the bubble that has forced 46 players into it. Yeah. I think the original plan was that they wanted to beef up some of the teams, uh, so they would have anyone outside of the Test 23 would have played against the Lions and got a bit of insight into them. Yeah. I just want to go back to kind of originally being very, very vocal about a 3 north thing and basing it on, you talk about how settled the box were, and the outside of Beast who's retired, and one or two players are unavailable, you've got the same setup, you've got Jock Nino, the coach, but he was the defensive coach, and Rusty's still involved, and he's very hands-on. Uh, the Lions are four teams coming together, which is always a challenge. You either hit it off or you don't. Uh, they... Uh, they had never played together until they played against Japan, and this box side has been in camp for five weeks. Uh, by by the time they played their first test, and they would have played two test matches. So, how quickly does a Lions team have to gel to take on that kind of settled combination? 
Well, well it has to do it kind of instantaneously, doesn't it? And, uh, and one thing that you have to create is harmony and you know, buy into a code of conduct, put, the, put in all of the COVID challenges to one side. This is still a team that needs to prepare well. Um, it, they need to understand their own limitations on you know, what are the aspects of how we play how are we going to play? Is this going to be a you know 100% Gatland-esque type performance, or are we going to see more of a greater influence from um, from the attacking coach? And certainly from a defensive perspective, you know they have to be tight. There is no doubt about that. But on balance, I think he has chosen a side that is more than capable of of, of winning this 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 um, test series, and that's the exciting thing about it because. When it was announced and the 10 or so omissions that a lot of the rugby peers were kicking and screaming about, my, my, own, my own instant karma was absolutely. Most of those uh, were not playing well, not in the condition to come to South Africa uh, and really challenge for a test spot. So and out of flavor, I wasn't surprised at all. So the freshness of his approach and, and the picks, I, I thought were... were were right on point and interestingly after the Allen Wynn injury um, Gatlin mentioned the world would we have to be nimble I have to be nimble so they move quickly on and and that's that, that's great they're gonna come out with a strategy against the the Lions on, on Saturday for sure um, we kind of want to see a DNA, a bit of a footprint of how the Lions are going to perform, how they're going to attack, what, what is their, you, what what is like their counter-attack going to look like. You know, the key staples, Kev, the silos are obviously scrum, line-out, breakdown, defense, strategy, you know, which means possession, keeping the ball, discipline. Under those, within those silos, there's the nuances and, you know, where tactically do we want to be playing? Speed of ball, tempo, who creates that? How do we do that? You know, how, uh, how good are we, uh, are we going to be at the back? What is our, what is our counter-attacking strategy going to look like? You know, I, I, so th all these questions will be answered in the first three or four games now to give us as, as supporters a level of comfort, a level of excitement about what the test series can bring because test games are different because it is going, they are going to be pressure there are going to be mis mistakes who capitalizes on them but rest assured we want to see both sides enter into this with you know with the the right type of attitude so we see a very disciplined uh, test series because nobody wants to see you know people being sent off the field which gives aside an advantage or not and I, and I think we will see that because technically we have you know at, at this moment in time the two best teams fighting it off uh, against each other. If you sorry Kev if you look at uh, at Gatland and you look at Wales and Wales is the one team that traditionally over the last five years has troubled the Springboks uh, they've kind of taken on a an all-black type aura uh, I think we've had two wins out of six against them and that World Cup semi-final 1916 it got down to the 78th minute it was as close as it was in 2015 when Farida Pri scored right near the end yeah. do you see him going with a very strong Welsh influence in his test team uh, and then the Irish Scottish uh, English padding around that uh, no, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. Not because, uh, not because of the personnel. Uh, and, and like I said, I think he's pretty fixed at the moment as what, uh, what he believes the best 23. I think the greater world uh, maybe identifies with what's the most experienced 23. The interesting factor, and, and this is the excitement from my perspective, is the first three, three games now is that there's every chance for upsets in certain positions because I think there's a question mark or an uncertainty over what is the best combination at 9-10 for, for the Lions? What is the composition of the front row? Uh, a lot of comp competition uh, at lock. The back row, obviously you've been very vocal about some of the inclusions uh, in the back row. So I think lots up for grab. If you look at the Lions squad and you, you take the last time we've seen the box, 32-12 against England, we will see them play. Eight of the side that's playing against Georgia will probably play in the test, in the test match. Where are the areas that you would look at the Lions set up and say, 
potentially there's a vulnerability or we really need someone to step up or kind of produce a performance we haven't quite seen yet? Well, interesting you say that because uh, I can only talk about my perspective as, uh, as being someone who's kind of in the middle of the field and, and seeing what I do because uh, I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask about you know, scrums, lineouts, breakdowns, and, and, and the pressure that that needs to, to be at, that pressure level that that needs to be at to put an opposition under pressure. But I see two, two key areas of, not weakness, but places to channel, to try and find cracks. And the more you apply pressure, the more that space, uh, space appears. And I think that is from a, from a set piece scrum, the relationship between uh, nine and 10, I, I would like to see us probe that. Um, you know, on two, three acute angles, and I think there's there is, I think there's an inherent window of opportunity uh, inside 13 and just outside in that 15 meter channel where I suspect, from Gregor Townsend's perspective, that we will want to flood a lot of our outside backs into that channel to create some separation for when the secondary uh, defense defensive lineup sets up. You know, the scramble defense that we create a little bit more chaos. But I see that unfolding. So we see this kind of footprint or get an appreciation for how the Lions are going to attack, their intent in attack and what that looks like. Because there's certainly the personnel to do it, but not without prudence. We have to have the ball. We have to keep the ball, win the ball, and create quick ball. Um, so those challenges will be set for, for, for the guys in the, in the next couple of weeks. That's what makes it so interesting because we can have a conversation in a couple of weeks' time, as will the greater world, as to what is the, f the what is the best starting 23 for the line, and for sure it will change through the t throughout the test series. If you take the ja the Japanese first 40 was very impressive, and obviously it lost shape the game when they yeah. made all the changes in the second half and a couple of injuries. They're now playing a Lions, domestic Lions side that a week ago lost 39-10 to the Pumas away from home, and it's the same side that's playing. So. Joe Public is saying, well, if they lost 39 to the Pumas and it's not the Argentinian Pumas, this Lions side should come in and destroy them. But that's not quite the case because they're going to be looking at combinations, quality of performance more than a scoreboard. But if they do struggle, how much pressure does it immediately put on a team uh, if you struggle against a side that's taken a beating against one of the, the weaker sides in South Africa? Let's answer that one first. I mean, listen, pressure creates pressure. And, and, and you know, understanding what pressure is in a game day situation is is totally different to pressure from a coaching you know perspective and how they deal with the press afterwards so uh listen there's a huge expectation that lions come out of the traps early and this is a very strong performance but i think gatlin will want to manage that performance and manage the combinations um as well as managing the scoreboard and managing the clock for, for, for sure but if they don't if they don't perform then it just creates fuel for people like you to to further undermine. But the fact is, you know, preparation is key. Why aren't these players, these international players, as a collective, you know, whitewashing teams like the Emirates Lions? But the Emirates Lions, they're a the competitive side, you know, they're a the settled side. Yes, they had the loss last weekend. But this is their nadir. This is their. This only happens once every twelve years. I mean, I saw a little post, really nice post from Yanni Duplessis. You know, comfortable on the bus, heading to training. What a week! This is their biggest game for some of them of their career. That's that's what this tour represents. So we have to look at it like that. Cool. Three nil. Listen, I, I'm not. Uh, I, it's not that I don't want to commit to anything. I, I, let's look at the betting for a second, because. Yeah. The Lions are favoured, 1.7. You're saying it's going to be 3-0. And I was saying that earlier on as well. Maybe I was a bit uh, influenced. Maybe I was drunk when we did that video, Mark. I'm not entirely sure. I know. You had watched the Chiefs play and Gatlin was still coaching. Them. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You didn't want a game with the Chiefs. Exactly. Know. Anyway, so, so the betting is, is on the Lions. It's come in. I mean, the Lions were, were, were more heavily favoured about a month ago. But, but uh, something's happened in the betting. Maybe the sharp money's coming in for, for the... Uh, for the box. I mean, Rassi's managed to spin this wonderfully in terms of everything that he said in his press conferences. And he is the guy that took us in 2018 from number eight or seven in the world to, to winning the World Cup. And he did say that we could win the World Cup. So he's got a lot of, uh, 
He's got a lot of gravitas and, and, and street cred in, 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 in the way he's prepared teams before. But uh, if, you, if I gave you both $100,000 and said, okay, bet it on the team you think is going to win this series, Mark, are you still, are you still betting the 100 on, 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 on the, uh, the box? Yeah, I would, I would bet it on the box with one, with one disclaimer. There could be a red card in the first two minutes. No disclaimer. So sakes, I don't think the box with 14 could beat the Lions with 15. So if 15 stays on the field against 15, I think the Springboks will be too strong. They will win all three tests, regardless of where they played. And I don't think it's an indictment on the Lions. I really think this is a very good Springbok squad. Well, maybe and we can find a bookies that'll give you money back if there's a red card. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, 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 it's an interesting element because, you know, what we've, what we've learned over the last 18 months, you know, what the world has learned is that, yeah, you know, this pandemic has taught us a lot of lessons. Is that what what will happen will happen i mean it's you know we we are not in control but if you are in control of your discipline and your appreciation and 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 ferocity at ruck time is technical and it's and and it's just and you keep everybody on the field then this test series has all the hallmarks of being one of the best you know you go back to 97 it was a great test series i mean lions shouldn't have won didn't have a kicker all of those kind of nuanced elements as you said definitely kind of created this mystique which the lions are carrying for 2009 test series incredible series of football uh, and this has all the hallmarks but if you were to give me a hundred thousand dollars kevin and we go back to the original um original schedule first test cape town second back in Hautang, uh i'd probably have to favor the box with full crowds, with full support, because it is that tough of, of, a, of a series of a body of work that you have to get to. But the fact is that maybe we are looking at three tests in Cape Town in the stadium. I, 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 I think that neutralizes the, the, the not neutralizes, wrong word. It kind of minimizes the box kind of influence mm. over their ability to dominate a test series because I think all bets are off in that sense. It's that it's you know level playing field, playing playing in Cape Town, well, a, a, a stadium that's not familiar to either team. Yeah. So you know logic lo logic says that well, you know the, the, from a betting perspective, the Lions should be ahead in that uh, in, in that wager. But if you if you take uh, again, while I disagree with you on that, is <laughs> well, I like to have thoughtful disagreement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've been quite amazed at how, how comfortably the bookies have made the Lions favourites, how comfortably they've spoken about a Lions squad that up until a week ago hadn't played together. What has given this Lions, or, or what gives credence to this Lions being the favourites? I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not a betting man. I'm not a bookie, so I don't, I don't know how that kind of, how that works. But what I do know is... Did it surprise you? Does it surprise you, Scott? Of course it does surprise me, because, you know, the box are world champions, and they're playing at home. I mean, you've got a tour inside, as you said, all come together. We all know that Gatlin is a wily fox, and, and whilst his... his, his not, so, not so in New Zealand. Well, no, that's right. I mean, his chief's form really didn't depict who, who he was, uh, who he is as a coach, and his ability to galvanize players. Because if you speak to former players and players who played under him, they, they do speak very highly of him. Yeah. So he knows the challenge. He does like to play the press. You know, he will, he will, he will deliberately put pressure on the Lions to perform. And he is someone who is very outspoken about you have to prepare well. He likes to see players, you know, training well. And, you know, if you play well under Gatland, you, you know, you get rewarded. But he understands, again, you're only as good as your last good game. So if you don't turn up and you don't perform, your opportunity is lost. And, and that's the great opportunity or the window of opportunity for players who, for the, for the greater world, may be seen on the periphery. And we don't know. We haven't seen Chris Harris, uh, you know, perform at this level, but a very exciting player and a, and a player that could be very disruptive against uh, the Spring, Springbok. So um, there are a huge amount of question marks, which mm. is the great part of where we are now. The, the, it'll change over the evolution of this, over this tour. Uh, and we'll be no shortage of content, will there? I mean, and, no. and right now we're trying to get a snapshot, in, in, any snapshot. You know, last week we got to see Japan versus the Lions. 
This week we get to see two more snapshots of, of the teams and try and get try and try and piece together who's going to win this tour. That's right. We we we, we can disseminate. Uh, we can speculate now as to what the game will represent and how the Lions will play uh, on Saturday. I mean, how the Emirates Lions play is, is totally up to them. I mean, ultimately, they are, they, you know, it's their hosts, their hosts, it's their city, it's their ground. Uh, we know how difficult it is going to be for the, for the Lions to go at altitude and perform and stay in the game and finish strong. But it, it'll give us a flavor as to where the... Those English players that have come in who haven't been part of the Jersey pre preparation because of their commitments, where they are, are they on point? You know, Farrell's form, Itoji's form. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of question marks. Good question marks, but they have to be answered not not only to us as a wider public, but to the guys, to to to, to Gatlin and his team who are going to make the call and going to make the, you know, the ultimate call. This is the best 23 to go up against. The, the, the Lions in the first test. Just two questions from a Bach perspective. As a player, you've played under Rossi Rasmus for two years. He's been the boss. His defense coach is now the boss, but he's still in the mix. How difficult a challenge would that be, do you think? Uh, or would it be a seamless transition? And then once you've answered that one, two Southern Hemisphere referees for the three tests, do you think it will be significant? In terms of interpretation, yeah, I, 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 both very interesting questions, and I think one thing that um, you know I've garnered over um, Rassi's kind of involvement is that uh, you know he is defied, he has actually defied kind of you know all expectations for South Africa, and um, you know, and I think that was well, we lost um, we lost Italy, <laughs> yeah. So you know, the fact is that you know. His preparation, his body of work was judged with obviously winning the World Cup. I mean, you, you, you can't do that by luck. He painted a Rembrandt. <laughs> Absolutely. So he knows all of the constituent elements that need to be fought and won on the football field. You know, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of talent in that squad. There is no doubt about that. There's few coming back from injuries. There's, there's, there's still a question mark on a few players that may come back into the fold to strengthen and galvanize. But it's, it, it is, I don't think there's any issue about what legacy that uh, Rassi leaves if this is his last uh, rodeo for sure. And this is obviously a start of a beautiful journey for Jacques as well, um, being elevated from defense coach into, 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 into head coach. Maybe so. a hospital pass. Two, two games against New Zealand after, after the Lions in, uh, in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. And listen, there's always a bigger picture. Yeah. There's always a bigger picture. And the, the immediate focus now, the myopic nature is this test, three test series against the Lions because it's just a building block to where they want to be uh, as a nation in 2023 in France. Simple as. But for Gatlin, different. It all finishes on August the 8th, August the 9th. That's, that's where it is. How influential will be the Southern referees? I think that has, there has to be 100% clarity from them in their discussions with, um, with, with Alliance management about, about how the game is going to be adopted, refereed at certain key elements. And what are the key elements we always... We always look at Gatlin is very strong on on how the how the scrum is refereed and obviously at, at the breakdown. Um, and both of those elements are key elements to create tempo in, in the game, and we want to see a high tempo series for sure. And you talk about uh, you talk about defence discipline. If you look at the the statistics in the last two three years, including the World Cup, the team that doesn't have the ball wins if they can maintain their shape and they can make their tackles. So you've seen all these games where teams are dominating possession, 65, 70% to 30, field position, 70, 30, and they get into, they take in a beating. Uh, down to that discipline, but also the referee interpretation of teams with the ball also get pinned a lot more than teams without the ball. Yeah, I didn't know that one, but uh, I mean, I know you are, you know, you won for, for that type of stat. I'm, listen, I'm more, always more of a flow and feel type of guy, and so, um, uh, not someone to, to add color commentary to to, mm. to it, but um, yeah, listen, you have to be you have to be strong defensively. There, there's a there's an orientation that you have to follow. Um, 
listen, from my, expect uh, my expectations and my experience against South Africa and playing against the spring boxes, you don't realize how big those thighs are. You don't realize how quick those guys are. You know, and when you line up against them, you know, walking out the tunnel, it is literally, fuck. <laughs> and then the, the intensity and the ferocity and the aggression and the way that they ran at you, it, it, you know, is intimidating. So you, 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 you constantly have to be dialing that up, your internal kind of a combustion engine about, right, we have to be right on point. So those tackles have to be pinpoint. They have to be harder than I've ever been able to do them. I have to be able to run and, and you know, and maneuver better than I've ever been able to do. So if the conditions are conducive to that, because we certainly got the pitches for that, but if the, if the mother city is kind with the weather, then we do, we, you know, we do have all hallmarks of this being a fantastic series, but you know, let's, let's be honest. The, the Springboks, they hit hard. You know, they, they're a tough bunch of, you know, guys. So there is, uh, there'll be no quarter given and then you, then you get to see the minerals. You get to see who really steps up, stands out from a British and Irish Lions perspective. And that's what tours are made of. Small little moments where you go, whew, wow. <laughs> <laughs>